our next case for permutation. So yesterday, when we looked at permutations, all of the objects we assumed were different. But what happens if some of them are the same? How does that change what we're doing? Okay, I guess the easiest way to illustrate why this works is to go by an example. Now, if I have two objects, let's go down to the ridiculously simple one, and if they're all different, the whole two of them, I could arrange them A then B, or I could arrange them B then A. So as we've seen, two factorial ways of doing it. Now, if the two of them were the same, Amazingly now, there's only one way we could do it, and that's AA. So the question is, how did we go from two factorial to one? Let's see what happens when there's three objects. When there's three objects and they're all different, so ABC, ACB, BAC, BCAC, ABCBA. So we end up with three factorial or six. Now if I make two of those the same, AAB, ABA, BAA. All right, so we've ended up with three. It's all right. Two objects went from two to one, six to three. What have we done the same? Divided by, or is there more happening? What happens when three of them are the same? Ah, now there's one. So I've gone from six to one in this case. So it's not just simply dividing by two. Huh? Let's go to four objects. Wee. No, I'm not going to read them all out. Okay, there's 24 of them. If two of them are the same, 12. So yes, okay, 24 to 12. We divide it by 2, maybe. 3 the same, I've ended up with 4. What am I dividing by? If all 4 are the same, it's now 1. So I'm not just dividing by 2 in that first case. What I'm dividing by, more importantly, is 2 factorial. Which, yes, turns out to be 2. Because yeah? what we're actually dividing by is the number of ways we could have arranged them if they were different. Because they're now the same, those arrangements no longer matter. So I divide by the number of ways those objects, if they were different, could have been arranged. So there it is. So it's the n factorial, but dividing by x factorial. So the number of ways of arranging all the objects divided by how many ways we could have arranged those same objects if they were different. All right. How many different words can be formed using all the letters in the word Connaughton? <laughs> so how many? Well, there are 11 letters in there, so 11 factorial. Then I notice that there are two O's, so I'll divide by two factorial. And there are three N's, so I'll divide by three factorial. So 11 factorial and two factorial, three factorial, which turns out to be, da -da -da -da, drum roll, there it is. Now, let's have a look at an HSC one. Now, in the HSC, they, they don't tend to make assumptions, because we know we're all good math students, it doesn't, necessarily mean we're good English students. So they start off by telling us A, E, I and O and U are things that are known as vowels. Okay, that's what a vowel is. It becomes important later in the question. How many arrangements of the letters in the word algebraic are possible? Well, there's nine letters, but there's two A's in there, so we'll divide by the two factorial. So 181,440. But how many arrangements are there if the vowels have to occupy the second, the third, the fifth, and the eighth position? So we look after our restrictions first. Now there are in fact four vowels in there all up, which is kind of handy. So we're going to use all the vowels and we're going to put them in the second, the third, the fifth and the eighth position. So basically we just have to arrange the four vowels. Four factorial over two factorial for the two A's. Now we will go and place, now time to learn a bit more. The ones that are not vowels are called consonants. Consonants. Yes. 
So now we will arrange the consonants. And there's five of those, five factorial, giving us a grand total of 1,440. All right. So that's the basic idea. We shall now add the odds from 10F to our list of questions to do.